It was a storm of unprecedented scale, a river in the sky that seemed to pour down from the tropics. How does a plume of vapour, stretching nearly 7,000 miles, 11,000 kilometres, change the face of a region? Does a Category 4 atmospheric river, already packing a quarter-inch 6.4 millimetres of water per hour, do more than just drench the hills and valleys? And could all that water in the sky somehow rattle the ground below, even nudging restless volcanoes like Rainier? These questions race through meteorologists' and geologists' minds as the Pacific Northwest bore the brunt of one of the longest, strongest atmospheric rivers ever recorded. The answers lie deep in the science. We explore how this supercharged moisture band was measured, the havoc it wreaked on mountains and rivers, and how the added weight of snow and rain can tip the delicate balance of faults and magma chambers beneath our feet. In satellite maps, the storm appeared as a narrow ribbon of moisture. From NASA's GEOS atmospheric model shows an immense green plume of precipitable water flowing across the Pacific toward the coast. By early December 2025, instruments confirmed this atmospheric river drew its moisture from near the Philippines, nearly 7,000 miles, 11,000 kilometers away. Meteorologists classify such storms by how much water vapour they carry and how long they linger. The Centre for Western Weather and Water Extremes CW3E scale ranks this event a Category 4, extreme, meaning it was mostly hazardous. By comparison, a Category 5 event would be exceptional, analogous to record-breaking hurricanes. No AA scientists emphasize that most atmospheric rivers are benign. Indeed, many are crucial drought busters, bringing the bulk of the West Coast's winter rainfall. But the largest storms can stall over vulnerable watersheds and create extreme rainfall and floods. This one was exactly the opposite of a gentle boon. It carried record moisture, making it a monster storm by any measure. The storm's strength showed in the rainfall totals. In western Washington, gauges recorded over 10 inches, 250 millimetres, of rain in just 72 hours. On December 10th alone, Seattle-Tacoma Airport set a new daily record with 1.6 inches, 40 millimetres, of rain. Such sudden deluges sent rivers roaring out of their banks, by midday, December 11th, the Skagit and Snohomish rivers had reached record or near record flood stage. Low-lying roads vanished underwater, and crews scrambled to evacuate riverside towns. The Washington Post noted the risk of rapidly moving mudslides and flooded highways below steep slopes, a reality played out as hillsides saturated and gave way. Across the region, highways such as I I 90 were cut off by landslides and floodwaters. Where the river hit the mountains, the precipitation fell as snow. Forecasts called for over nine feet, 2.8 meters, of new snow on Mount Rainier's upper slopes. That is enough to bury cars and avalanche behemoths of ice into the valleys below. The weight of so much snow is more than a mountaineer's nightmare. It is a factor that can literally press down on the crust. In fact, scientists have shown that surface loads from heavy snow or rain can subtly tweak stresses underground. A 2024 MIT study of Japan's Noto Peninsula found that seismic swarms there were closely tied to extreme precipitation. When snow and rain pile up on the landscape, subsurface pore pressures rise. When the water runs off, the crust can rebound slightly, triggering tremors. In other words, climate itself became a second-order trigger of earthquakes there. It is conceivable that the unprecedented rain loading on the Cascades during this event altered stresses on local faults, perhaps not enough to cause a large quake, but enough to remind geologists that the world's weather and its geology 
are entangled. Heavy runoff and sediment loads also increase the risk of landslides, another form of earthquake under the right conditions, on deforested or burn-scarred slopes. Beyond these surface effects, geologists warn that any big disturbance in one sphere can ripple through another. The Cascades lie atop a subduction zone, capable of generating magnitude 9 quakes and feeding powerful volcanoes. If the atmospheric river were a nudge, what of the tectonic giants? History shows a mixed answer. Where does that leave Rainier? In one way, its status as an icy volcano means it will respond to weight changes above it. Heavy snow and ice add pressure that can suppress magma motion. A recent study of glaciers and volcanoes in the Andes found that thick ice sheets literally choked off eruptions. Under the Patagonian ice sheet, silica-rich magma layers built up quietly until deglaciation. When the ice melted at the end of the last ice age, the sudden loss of weight caused the crust to rebound. Gases in the magma expanded and explosive eruptions followed. In the words of the lead scientist, glaciers tend to suppress the volume of eruptions from the volcanoes beneath them, and only when the glaciers retreat do those volcanoes erupt more often and explosively. By that logic, Rainier's growing winter snowpack could be seen as a temporary cap, pressing down on the magma chamber and slowing any chance of shallow venting. Conversely, if that ice were to melt quickly in a future warm spell or eruption, it would reduce pressure and potentially promote an explosive burst. In practice, however, the most immediate volcanic risk from this storm is on the volcano's flanks, not deep inside. Mount Rainier is notorious not for towering lava flows, but for its history of deadly lahars, glacier-fed mudflows. USGS notes that hot rock avalanches or even just landslides on Rainier will swiftly melt large amounts of snow and ice, generating torrents of muddy debris that can rush tens of miles, 16 kilometers, down river valleys. The heavy snowfall thus heightens the Laha hazard. More snow means more material to melt. Any eruption or collapse could unleash those avalanches. In fact, Rainier's greatest threat to the Seattle-Tacoma area is not eruption ash, but these pyroclastic-generated lahars that can bury highways and neighborhoods and which the existing volcanic hazard maps are largely designed to predict. Geologists and emergency planners will now have to account for the unusually large snowpack in their river and avalanche forecasts. Finally, it is worth placing this event in the context of a changing climate. Observations and models concur that atmospheric rivers are getting stronger as the planet warms. The AP's analysis notes that Pacific storms since 1980 have grown 6 to 9% larger and about 2 to 6% more frequent than before, thanks to warmer seas and air that hold more moisture. Higher ocean temperatures fuel the atmospheric river even more, climate experts explain. In simple terms, this means the rivers in the sky will, on average, carry more water. In fact, the Christmas week outlook already warned that this AR was part of a longer tap of moisture expected to last into the holidays. As no AA's coastal science chief quipped, he would not want to live there during such reloads. For now, scientists and citizens alike will watch the aftermath after the floods recede. Will the earth itself show any shaking? So far, there have been no reports of significant new earthquakes tied to the storm, but subtle signs will take time to emerge. Geophysicists will be analysing GPS data and seismic records for weeks to see if the crust moved even millimetres from all that water weight. And volcanologists will track Rainier's glacier dynamics closely for any unusual creeks or swarms beneath its peak that signal shifting stress. 
The atmospheric river may have felt like a catastrophe from above, but its ripples go far deeper. If past events are any guide, the interplay of this storm with the Earth's rocky underbelly could yield surprises. After all, even weather can shake worlds. In a way, the sky's downpour is a reminder that water, earth and fire are linked. A deluge in the clouds might just find its way into the bedrock. If this deep dive helped you understand what is really happening beneath the Pacific Northwest, make sure to like this video so it reaches more curious minds. Share it with anyone who wants to understand the science behind extreme events, and subscribe to stay ahead of the next major geological story. Do not forget to tap that hype icon. It tells the algorithm this content matters and helps this channel reach a wider audience. Your support keeps in-depth science reporting alive.